the attack on scientists is very well structured by the biotech industry. It's systematic, it's worldwide, it's very coordinated. It's part of the way that they do business. What's, I think, very unique in my case is that I survived. One of the reasons why we are lining up now is, of course, to protect ourselves against the attacks which will continue to come, of course, because we are obviously threatening to the markets of uh, the producers of genetically modified organisms and other genetically engineered products. Our discovery that we were finding transgenic corn maybe a thousand miles from the nearest legal transgenic corn field was a huge problem for them because it really showed very simply and with real evidence that they really did not have control. No one gets up in the morning saying, I want to go buy a genetically engineered food. They offer no benefits, no more nutrition, no more flavor, no nothing. They only offer risks. His brilliant design showed that it wasn't the insecticide that caused the problems. It was somehow the process of creating the genetically engineered potato. They asked me, would you eat it? I said, no, certainly not the, the GM potatoes we worked on. If, if I could avoid it, I would certainly avoid it. The next morning, Arpad Pustai was fired after 35 years and silenced with threats of a lawsuit. They did not want people to have that knowledge and not want them to have that choice. So this isn't just a story about science. It's a story about knowledge, democracy, and freedom of choice. They should not use our fellow citizens as human guinea pigs. Virtually every food that you uh, consume, including you in Germany, has some genetically modified product in it, okay, whether it's soybeans or corn. So you remember that the animal that has been fed on GM has been changed. Now, when you are eating that animal fed on GM, you will be eating a different animal. <laughs>